Hello and welcome to Meadow Afternoon. This is a place where I share writing behind the scenes and short stories inspired by slow living historical fiction and homemaking. It's a sunny day in my studio and the early summer has settled into the garden. Today I wanted to mark Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee by making a special pudding and sharing a new short story. The pudding I am making is the Lemon Swiss Roll and Amaretti Trifle by Gemma Melvin. Gemma's pudding is the official Jubilee pudding. Fortnum and Mason, which is a large department store in London, held a competition to come up with the Jubilee pudding and this one is the winner. I began by gathering all the ingredients I would need and baking the Swiss rolls. I am making the pudding from scratch and there are eight different components to make. Individually, they are not that complicated, but getting everything together was time consuming and it's nice to try and take your time and enjoy the process of baking. So I set aside most of the day to making this pudding and focused on one section at a time. Whilst I bake, let's begin the story I wrote for the occasion and go back to a summer's day in 1953. Coronation Day, a short story by Ida Williams. The house was brimming over with people. In every room they gathered, leaning against the walls, sitting on chairs and the arms of the sofa. A hum of voices and the constant tread of footsteps rose upwards towards the ceiling, mingling in with the smoke from Uncle Frank's cigar. Alice paused in the hallway as several younger cousins ran past, knocking her sidewards against the wallpaper. Bursting is what the house felt like. Bursting with people. It made her head hurt. Gripping the tray of empty glasses, she went forward once more. She tried to remember that normally she liked it when all the family came together. Normally she enjoyed the noise. Normally it was fun. But on that day in early June, she didn't feel like normal. The clatter seemed ready to engulf her. All of that was Richard's fault. Entering the living room, Alice made her way carefully around the outstretched legs of her grandfather, harboured in his spot on the sofa, and around a couple more cousins, magazines rustling in their hands whilst perched on the top of cushions on the floor. Alice, come sit. Which of these evening dresses do you like best? Hilda likes the blue one, but it's awful, don't you think? Oh, please, the yellow one is not much better. The magazine was snatched and the page turned. See, look at the pleats. They sit all wrong. The two of them continued on for a while, but Alice didn't hear much more, moving around the room, picking up the empty cups and scattered plates. She didn't feel like talking. There had been too much talking the night before. If I turn this knob here, it adjusts right away. Not a bad price either. Aye, it's grand. I'd wager not a finer one on the street. The cigar was moved from one side of the mouth to the other. Now look here, round the back. The two men, kneeling on the carpet, now leaned around the small television set their receding hairlines disappearing, and their conversation exclusively becoming about wiring. The centre of attention that day sat in its place of honour, bought the week before the small screen flickered in its black and white glory. Look at them, boys with their new toy. Aunt Mildred and Aunt Agatha whispered back and forth. Frank's just like that, always something new he's doing in the shed. Last month he took apart an old radio, made an awful mess. Dear, at least you have a shed. My Arthur is always leaving his paints out on the dining table. How he thinks we're going to eat dinner, I don't know. Alice silently crossed past them, rescuing a bowl that her sleeping Uncle Arthur had fallen off his lap. Richard was like that too, tinkering on his old car, he was ever so proud the day he got it to run again. 
But she didn't want to think of Richard and the oil grease in his hair. All night she had thought of Richard. Richard in every season, Richard on every day they'd spent together. Her head hurt. Outside the living room window, on the front lawn, her little cousins played. Loudly chasing each other round and round the mulberry bush, getting grass stains all over their best clothes. Alice sighed. At least they didn't argue, didn't quarrel over stupid things. Pursing her lips, she stomped towards the kitchen. She was not going to think of Richard any more. I tell you, Beryl, I do. I've never gone wrong with this recipe. Never? Not once. A child couldn't go wrong. It was the first thing I ever taught Alice to make. And it turns out so pretty, Kate. Look now. Alice's mother set the last strawberry on top of her layered sponge cake with a flourish. Can't say better than that, not even at the palace. Her sister gave a laugh. You think the Queen has a plain Victoria sponge? She doesn't strike me as the fussy type, does she, Alice? Alice shook her head, focusing steadily on unloading the crockery into the sink as the two older women continued to chat their patterned aprons set against floral dresses and curled hair. Alice wanted to dig a hole and settle deep inside, surrounded by dark and quiet. It really was Richard's fault. He'd started the whole argument. He had to be so stubborn. She hadn't been emotional, he'd been stubborn. Well, he could go, just go. The sudden image of Richard walking away trapped the breath in her throat. Maybe not forever, no, not go away. Alice leaned her head forward so it touched the cabinet door. Why did they have to argue? It was all so stupid. Behind her, the two women exchanged a glance. Is Richard coming over today? asked her mother. He said he would. Alice wanted to cry. That was before last night, before he had said she was overreacting. Why would he want to come now? Come, come, she's nearly there. The smallest of the cousins had run into the kitchen, grabbing his mother by the hand. Come on, come on, Uncle Jack says he's got it all set up. The family poured into the living room, the children lying belly first down on the floor and the adults sitting where they could find room. All attention was fixed on that small screen broadcasting from the capital. Look at all them peers and doodads. What a bunch of old fogies. Don't drop the crown, lads. Oh, Frank, hush. The children giggled in the front row, and Uncle Frank's running commentary would continue with vigour, only interrupted at intervals by an elbow in the ribs from his wife. As the prayers were read, no one noticed a knock on the front door and a tall young man slipped into the house. Alice stood behind the sofa and watched the Queen as she walked steadily through the abbey, the light glistening off her jewellery and six women dressed in white carrying her long train. The Queen's face was solemn. Alice couldn't get rid of the lump in her throat. She kept swallowing and swallowing. They must never argue again, not ever. Just as she was about to turn away with an idea of running down the street, a hand slipped resolutely into hers. Looking up in surprise at Richard, now standing by her side, she smiled. From across the room, her mother called over casually. Ah, oh, Richard, there you are. Are you staying for the coronation? Yes, I'm staying for it all he replied, returning Alice's smile. Putting an arm round Alice, they sat down on a spare bit of carpet. Leaning her head against his shoulder, Alice felt cosy in the crowded room. Her head didn't hurt any more. On the flickering screen, the pageantry of the ancient service played out, with the calm and measured voice of the narrator pulling all who watched into the Gothic Abbey to join a young woman as she walked to meet her future as the Queen. The End
Whilst the trifle was setting in the fridge, I headed outside to find some wild flowers for the table. I wanted red, white and blue, and after some searching I came back successful. The red flowers are geraniums that grow in the garden, but I don't know the names of the other two that I found. Blue flowers are quite hard to find, and I was lucky to see a few poking out on the side of the road as I walked by. The summer heat is already starting to turn the landscape. Soon the grasses will be brown and there will be nothing left of the flowers but seed pods that the wind will rustle to make music. I thought the trifle worked out really well, although admittedly I am not much of a trifle person and I don't like whipped cream very much, but the rest of the family did enjoy it. I wanted to write a story today that was focused on a normal family and I read that two million television sets were sold in the run-up to the coronation so people could watch the broadcast from home and I thought that would make a really nice centrepiece for the short story today. The Queen's coronation was held on the 2nd of June 1953 at Westminster Abbey in London. However, her father had died more than a year before, in February 1952, which is why the 70-year jubilee was held this year instead of in 2023, which would match the year of the coronation. It's tradition to allow quite a bit of time to pass before holding the coronation, partly out of respect for the previous monarch, but also to allow plenty of time for planning. Queen Elizabeth is the United Kingdom's longest reigning monarch, at 70 years on the throne. She's worked steadily throughout all those years, although now at 96, she attends less engagements today than she did. I think that's a remarkable achievement, and I've always admired the Queen for her devotion to duty, to service, and her general good humour. She is the ultimate professional, and so was her husband Prince Philip. I wanted to mark this occasion with a story and a video, not just because it's a first, she is the first monarch to be on the British throne for 70 years, but also because I think it's important to continue traditions. It's good to have things that bring people together in celebration, and to have traditions that carry throughout the years and I love all the pageantry that has accompanied the Jubilee in Britain. Feel free to leave a comment down below and say hello. Do you like trifle puddings? Have you ever made one? I'd love to hear your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed the story in the video today. Until next time. <laughs>